I'm cheating on Dunkin' Donuts. Oh my god. Blue Starbucks. Cheater, mm. cheater. <laughs> <laughs> I finally got my M1 Yarns mug out. Oh, cute. Like a year later. I can make one of those, you know. Please do. Yeah, with my markers. We, we should. We need some podcast mugs. We do. When we get our logo, we'll we'll get some podcast mugs. Yeah, we have a logo coming. Yay! Yay! We're not starting with bloopers. We're starting with all goodness. Mm-hmm. And socks, <laughs> because this is a sock make along episode. If I had thought about it, I would have pulled out the prizes, but they can just be surprises, maybe. Yeah. Surprise. Surprise prizes. prizes. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we are on a roll today. Hello and welcome to episode 10 of M1 Yarns and the Michigan Makers podcast. Coming to you today from Metro Detroit, Michigan. This is a podcast where we're, we talk about making things, not just knitting, but being all around makers. <laughs> I am Jamie, also known as M1 Yarns on Ravelry, Instagram, Facebook, and also my website where I sell my hand dyed yarn and candles and lotion bars, which is m1yarns.com. And I am Danielle, also known as Danielle Crafts 08 on Instagram and Ravelry. And I don't have a website where I sell things. I probably should, but I don't. If you are a um, new viewer, please don't forget to subscribe and like our video and comment below. And if you are an old subscriber, I don't like, not like not, a, not old, old, not old, not like old person. <laughs> but if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. And thank you for joining us again today. Yes. And we welcome people of all ages. Old, yes. young, all races, all backgrounds, all walks of life. Instead is, of old, we'll say mature. Yes. Because old sounds. I often wonder if I'll be mature when I'm old. I hope not. <laughs> I Just don't in think the right I ways. <laughs> I don't think I am. Once my friend was um, joking that she would... Um, like not be able to like walk because she hurt her back mm -hmm. and she said well i might have to come to school in a wheelchair i said don't expect me to push you because i'm gonna want to race and do willies and do all of the immature things yeah. that people do right and she was like yeah you want me to want to push you <laughs> so i doubt if i'll be mature <laughs> So, we are, um, we should just start with what we're knitting on today because this is a big deal. Yes, we are knitting on socks. Socks. You Why should... are we knitting on socks, Jamie? Well, we, you should show yours so we How? can, do you have enough blue on yours? I don't have enough blue. We'll I'll just... insert some photos. Yeah, we'll insert some photos when I have enough blue. Sure. We are both knitting sock kits that I created. I created two different sock kits for our M1 yarn sock make along. That's the hashtag. It kicks off. Well, we're recording this in advance, but this video will debut on April 1st, which is the day the make along kicks off, but you know, we had to get ahead of the game. Yes, we had, well, I don't know about Jamie, but I know for myself, I needed to get past the ribbing because that is the most annoying part for me. Well, and I decided to do an all ribbed sock. I'm oh, really. I was wondering why you're ribbing. I was like, did she do too much ribbing? Because remember that one mm -hmm. sock you showed me um, in New York, and it was like really the size of a hat. And I was like, is she doing that again? Remember the sock that you started years ago? Oh. And then you showed it to me, and I was like, is she making that same mistake? Oh, it's because you're doing an all ribbing sock. Yeah. Okay. Remember I sent you that pattern where. Um, I was asked, so I've only made one pair of socks before, and it was like your standard vanilla sock recipe. So I had the ribbing, and then it was all stock knit, and I did the fish lips kiss heel after trying maybe four or five different heel methods. I don't know. I was blowing up your phone with messages asking for help on that. But the fish lips kiss method really worked for me. That I have, I have that pattern. Okay, yeah. Maybe I'll try it on this. It was so many pages, though, but you say you only need, like, two you of the only, pages, You only, yeah. Right? It's okay. like a 20-page pattern mm -hmm. that's really two pages. Okay. It's a lot of explanation for those who enjoy that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but if you've already knit socks before and you have a sense of, like, your foot length and width, you're, you're good to go. Because you've already done the homework of, like, yeah. okay, I know generally how much... 
you yeah. know, this, that, and the other you need. Yeah. But because the only pair of socks that I've ever finished from start to finish for both was all stockinette, I wanted to try a different method this time. And um, so that's what I'm doing. And um, so the make along, let's see, we talked about. Um, we talked about this a bit before on the last episode, but let's just recap. Kicks off today, April 1st, runs through September 21st, and the whole point of it is to have a pair of socks for fall, and it not be burdensome amongst your other um, projects. It's just something you can slowly knit a little bit here, a little bit there, over the course of spring and summer, and hopefully when life, hopefully by fall, life is returning a little bit to normal and we'll be able to step out in our socks and um, what was I going to say there will be prizes there will be a um, there's a prize for finishing your first sock by July 1st and there's a prize for finishing the pair by September 21st we might have a lot of two at a time folks which there should be another prize for for two at a time? Yeah. Yeah. I think um, if you're doing two at a time, if you, I don't know, we'll have to think about that. And what if you, what if you, I thought about this the other day, and I, I guess I should have texted you before now. What about if you finish more than one pair of socks? And again, it's not a competition. No. This is, this is not a competition. It is something to engage you, and there's no, you know, losing right um being a part of it having fun interacting with us uh, interacting with you i think is the biggest thing mm -hmm. but what if someone knits more than one pair of socks by september for me that's impressive oh so if they if they because like if i start april 1st mm -hmm. and i finish the stock and i'm like oh i want to cast on some more socks and here are my socks that I want to enter into. You know. Yeah, that that would be a, another good pri um, prize category. Mm -hmm. okay. So we're just coming up with the rules as we go. I'll probably only finish one, and hopefully it'll be uh, yeah. not one sock, but hopefully a pair. Oh yeah, because I am a slow snot sock. That's not <laughs> say that fast. <laughs> I am a slow sock knitter. Are you though? Because I am. you really knit a lot of socks. So here's what happens. I will knit a sock or I'll start a sock and I'll also have a sweater on my needles. Okay. And then I'll get tired of the thinking that I have to do for my sweater. And I'll pick up my sock and then I'll knit it and I won't put it down. Mm. And I'll just keep going, going, going. So you're like I'll almost monogamous. It. Yeah. Even though you have multiple whips. It's like, yeah, I imagine that's kind of like having like a side chick or a side dude. Like, <laughs> you know, you call him when you feel like it kind of thing. Right. And so I, I call my socks when I feel like it. Then I pick them up and then we are like on a whirlwind in our relationship. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, you know, me and the sweater, we back together again. We're good. And then I put the socks down and I get back with my sweater. So that's kind of how I am. So is the sweater the main dude? The sweater is the main dude. And the because socks? Because the sweater, <laughs> this is getting kind of crazy, okay? Because I sound like a real cheater. But the sweater <laughs> No is, judgment. <laughs> the sweater is like the main dude because you can like see the sweater. You know, the sweater you take to dinner and it, you be out in public and stuff. Right. The socks are in your shoes. Socks Nobody in your shoes. can see you. <laughs> You're good, but that's how I, so it seems like I'm, I'm knitting them fast, but I may have had them on the needle for a long time before I actually, like, pick them up again mm -hmm. and, like, finish them. So, the, um, the idea of the make-along is either knit or crochet, any pattern, and don't stress about it. This is a perfect opportunity if you've never knit socks before. Jump on the bag wa band ba bag wagon that too your project bag whatever, <laughs> um, but just join us for something to kind of memorialize this time that we will proudly wear out when um, when the pandemic is a little less crazy. I am looking for um, a good crochet sock pattern. The, the pattern that I that I did before mm -hmm. 
she has a number of sock patterns and um i want to say it was last well it was last year or the year before uh she started <clears throat> um writing her patterns they're they're free okay so back then you had to pay for them so lakeside loops I don't know if she's still doing free patterns, but she may have some free patterns. But Lakeside Loops on Instagram has great crochet sock patterns if you're looking for a crochet sock pattern. Cool. And they're easy, um, easy in a sense that um, they're not so hard that you can't understand the pattern. I mean, they're, it gets a little weird around the like gusset and everything, but for the most part, her patterns are well written. Nice. And she's always coming out with new sock patterns. So, and the other thing that we should talk about is that um, we encourage you to use stash yarn mm -hmm. um, if you need a kit. I have kits, but that's you're not. You know, this is a judgment free zone. Do what works for you. Just join us, and um, we're just excited. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm excited to have another pair of hand knit socks because. I have small feet, socks rarely fit well, and um, the other pair that I knit last year I don't really wear because I wanted them to be a shop sample of my hot rod yarn. Okay. And I just want them to look as pristine as possible for like, um, you know, when the world opens back up and I'm doing... Oh, uh, you're doing a show? Yeah. Yeah. So that makes sense. This pair... I mean, I guess this could be a shop sample, too. But mm -hmm. this this pair is really for me. Okay. You know? I started um, what you call a sock box, like, two years ago, and I still haven't filled the box up. Okay. And so I think I have, because I knit Reggie two pair of socks. I knit myself, I want to say, three pair, and then I'll have a fourth pair when I, fin when I actually put the heels in on this pair of socks here. So this will be my fifth pair for myself. That's not bad. But I'm supposed to have like 24 pairs by now. Why? Oh, because, because every year I enter the, the doggone thing and never finish. So is it supposed to be 24? <laughs> it's supposed to be. So two years ago I entered the box of socks. Okay, it was box of socks 2019. And I think I got one pair out. And that one pair wasn't for me. That was for Reggie. So then 2020 came. And somewhere between 2020 and now, I was able to knit five pairs of socks. But why is it 24 socks? I because mean, it's supposed to be tw a pair a month. It's supposed to be a box of socks, 12 Oh, 12 pairs. pairs. I was thinking right. 24 pairs. But it's No, it will be 24 because I started in 2019. Oh, okay. So I'm supposed to have 12 pairs for 2019, 12 pairs for 2020. But more than likely, you, you now you would have... 12 sweaters instead of 12 pairs. Maybe. So you have like big socks. You have torso socks. I mean, that was my and, main That was my main and thing. And arm socks. <laughs> socks. Socks was my side thing. Sweaters, so that was my main thing. You're, you're focusing on, you know. Yeah, the sweaters. On your main boo. Yeah, yep, sweaters. Don't, don't tell Reggie. And I actually have, I'm so conflicted in <laughs> what sweater I'm going to cast on next. Oh, I have anxiety about texting you what should I cast on next because my head is all yes, over the I place. Yes, I have so many new designers I want to try. I have so many patterns that I've had in my queue. And I have the yarn. That's the good thing. I have the yarn. I do not have to buy <laughs> any more yarn. So I'm really <laughs> excited about that. Um, but I, I just don't know what I'm going to cast on next. Okay, well, you've been debating, well, there's two patterns that we both agreed we would knit this year, and one was the zipper sweater. I still can't decide a color for that, so I really need suggestions. I thought you decided on the wine color. No, I didn't decide on that. Oh. I'm really kind of strongly leaning towards oatmeal. That's what I was thinking. I have an oatmeal color sweater that's like a pullover. And I thought that this zipper sweater, um, which I'll insert a photo, um, would look nice in that. And mm -hmm. I do want something kind of neutral. Okay. Um, and then the other sweater we've both talked about is the puff tee. And um, maybe that will be next. But I have so many, like, 
as per usual, Jessie Mae tanks that I feel like I need. But they knit up fast, so. I feel like I want to make a couple of tanks as well because it's March and, like, May, June, mainly June, July, August, I'm not going to wear a sweater. And so. <laughs> I would hope not. I need to knit at least three tanks. And I think I can do that. I think that's doable, especially because there's no sleeves. Yeah. Generally, there's, like, not this section. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, it, it's pretty... I, I think I said it in my Instagram post today or yesterday that knitting four <coughs> tanks is, um, is like knitting one winter sweater. Yeah. By the time you add up all the <coughs> stitches. Sorry, my dog keeps barking. I'm trying to decide if I want to do another My <coughs> Secret crop top i do too um my needle is coming loose look at that but where's your little thing what your little tea pin do you do you put the tea pin in there to tighten it yeah i did i mean you never had that back up before <sighs> you know that's the second chow goo needle that has untwisted on me in uh -oh. the last week so you got the counterfeit ones <laughs> you know what's funny so I was looking at my needles because remember when I texted you about um, the child goes in, mm -hmm. in the, the whole counterfeit thing? And so I was like, oh man, I have to like check my needles. And I thought my blue, because I have the blue ones, I thought they were upstairs. So I went upstairs looking for them, couldn't find them. And I'm like, okay, where are the my needles? I got to make sure they're not fake. And so I did find them in the bottom of that bag. And then when I was looking at the child goo picture that compared the counterfeit to the real needles... <laughs> The fake needles M looks like the M like the M and M M, <laughs> like the font because they said the font is what helps you determine. So they, there were a couple different things that help you determine if they were counterfeit. And we should say that these counterfeit Chow Goo sets are being sold on Amazon. On Amazon. So on Chow Goo's website, they've like put out some guidance mm -hmm. on how to tell if whatever you you have bought or you're thinking about buying. Um, is counterfeit and that their bottom line is like you can always your best bet is to always buy from a local yarn shop um, yep. just to guarantee so the M on the counterfeit chow goo uh, looks like the M&M and M, M oh the like a, almost like a typewriter M. yes mm -hmm. yes yes and so I looked I was like oh lord please don't have that little extra little stick at the bottom <laughs> of the M. <laughs> and, and I'm like, okay, they're real. But remember I told you, I was like, I'm afraid to find out. I'm almost just like, I don't want to know. They yeah. work. I, I just don't want to know. But I had to find out. And they're real, thank God. Yeah. Oh, the sun just came in. Ooh, I got to I gotta close the blinds. I'm getting, like, major blown out. <laughs> so, oh, what we were talking about was um, the Summer Secret Top. Se so, secret summer top? Yes. I but, want to knit that, but I kind of don't want to do the ribbing. You know what? It's... I'm wondering if I can modify it to do... Oh, there you go. Always modify all, it. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Every pattern I get ends up Everything. not being the pattern. Right. Um, But I still give credit to the person sure. who wrote the pattern because they wrote the recipe, but... I'm wondering if I knit that and I modified it to do just stockinette, would it fit properly? No. You have... Unless uh, I can go up a size. Or two. Yeah. I just do the damn pattern. Pretty much. <laughs> That's just all it is. Okay, so on the note of this pattern, which... I knit that top last summer, and honestly, I love that top so much. I love mine, too. I just haven't had a chance to wear it again because I haven't gone anywhere. Okay, my friend Catrice reached out to me a month or two ago mm -hmm. and asked for a custom colorway um, because she wanted to knit. She originally had a different Jessie Mae pattern in mind for this yarn. Um, I don't know if you saw this. I'll insert a photo here. Um but she just knit that secret summer top smoking hot. Wait, is that it? Yeah. And look, her nails it match. Doesn't even, but it doesn't look like it's ribbed. It looks like she did all stuck in that. 
Oh, you know what? I think she did all stocking that. I'm going to ask her. Summer Secret Prep. Yeah. That's definitely stocking it. Yeah. She oh, did you're going to have to chat with her. Yeah, because she did it. Oh, interesting. I might be able to do it. Yeah, you'll have to get her um her feedback yeah. on like, her modifications. Like her modif yeah. Okay. Well, anyway. And that, that's a free pattern. It um, is. It is a free pattern, and uh, Jessie may, she she modifies it from time to time, or she up, updates it from time to time, because remember, when we got it, like, as soon as she put it out, mm -hmm. it wasn't testing it. Yeah, it wasn't testing was it, but the there were, like, it. minimum, there was, like, yeah. minimum mistakes, she if is. any, in the pattern. It was, like, she nailed it the first time. Yeah. The only difference is that when she modified it, it was a smaller needle for the ribbing. Oh. And we knit on just the same size needle. I think it was like a 370, 3.75 millimeter. You know, I don't know those U.S. Yeah, numbers. Yeah, I know. I'm like... I do not know the U.S. <laughs> numbers. Because with crochet, it's letters. Right. It's like J, But K. you know the millimeters for your hooks, right? Or do you do letters? See, do I can't letters? remember... And, um, doing letters for I hooks? do the millimeters. I do the millimeters because oh. I when I crochet, I mainly crochet with a five point five, which is a letter, millimeter. which is a letter, and I don't know the letter. It's too much to remember. Just <laughs> just put the just look up the thing and yeah. put it in the gauge. Um, <laughs> I mean, not the gauge, but the um, whatever you call the thing that measure the size and keep it going. Right. When people say like US three, I'm like. Google. What's US <laughs> three in millimeters? Right. I never know. I wonder if Siri knows that. I'm sure she does. Siri knows everything. Um speaking of Jesse May patterns, I'm knitting the outline tank. Let's talk about that. Okay. I hope you guys have a drink for this one. I'm about to get a tequila. Um <laughs> so you guys know I love Jesse May and her designs. And I was really excited for this outline tank. And it's basically like four triangles. So two for the front, two for the back. Mm -hmm. They're all made the same. When you're done with either the whole thing or the or one cup, as it were, you drop some stitches. Well, I did this right before Danielle came over to record this episode. And I recorded it. I will have to like insert the last bit. Because something went wrong, I messed up somewhere along the line, and I have some drop stitches, so I, I need to figure out what I did wrong, because otherwise I'll repeat the mistake on the next three mm -hmm. triangles. But, um, so you can kind of get a feel, this hasn't been blocked or anything, so, it, you know, and excuse the stitch marker, which is catching my drop stitches, but, um, and this color is kind of blowing out. Um, this is my Viola colorway on, um, my sport weight superwash base, and I'm really loving it. It's not my norm, and I wanted something different, and I think that was good. You know, mm. you gotta change it up. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, so tonight I gotta fix these drop stitches, get back to that, but, I mean, it's cruising right along. I really love the project. Nice. So I guess that counts as a um, a whip. A whip. I um I don't. Uh, is that your only whip? No. Well, we talked about the socks. I talked about that, and then the only other whip I guess I'll just um, throw out there is so Casey of the Scaniac is doing the sweater worthy make along. I'm. We can only do <clears throat> adult sweaters, right? Kid sweaters, right? Um, I'm behind. You're either supposed to, by the end of March, have the torso or the sleeves done or something. I oh, today say. is the end of March. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I am about to join, um, in the round on the, on the yoke. But this is the Dayton Pullover by You and I Knit. And this is, I'm making it for my husband. <clears throat> And he chose the blue. I really love it. And it kind of goes with this blue. That is super cute. It's actually the same colorway, but how it shows up on... A different base. Yeah. 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 So, 
Um, and this is like kind of blown out with the white of, of um, you know, the white here is like making this portion of the blue lighter. And then down here, it's a little bit darker. Mm -hmm. But I love it. It's super cute. Oh, and this is my FO, the bright feather. I'm done. Um. It's off the needles. <laughs> Can we just take a moment? Oh. We need to like pop the champagne. <laughs> I, I thought I cast this on last November. I actually cast it on in August. Really? Yes. But it kept getting put in time oh, out. Oh, wow. So I am... I didn't realize it's been thrilled. that long. You it's usually done. don't have anything on the needles that, that long. Is, no, that is so unlike me. I hate to lose steam on a project, and that's why I really limit myself to three whips. Mm-hmm. Because, um, you know, I can do my main boo, my side boo, and then my, like, every blue moon boo... But other like than your that, boo that lives out of town? Yeah. <laughs> that's like not a boo. That's like a booty call. <laughs> Listen, me and Reggie, we've been watching too much Divorce Court. This is where this is coming from. We've been watching Divorce Court in the kitchen while we're eating dinner as like a guilty pleasure. Mm -hmm. And is like every guy that's cheating, he's like <laughs> cheating with some boo out of town. I can't believe that show is even still on. Oh my God, it's hilarious. That is funny. It is hilarious. Uh, not not that divorce is hilarious. Divorce is no. not hilarious. No. The show is hilarious because of some of the, the antics. But, um, so, I, when I'm wearing, we you, yep. you talk about what you're yep. wearing. Please go ahead. I'm actually wearing an Odie but Goodie. Um, this is the Princeton Capelet by, I, I forget who it's by, but it was a blue sky fiber pattern. And this is the um, blue sky fiber cashmere, eco cashmere. And they discontinued it. And I actually really like this yarn. And I was going to buy some. It was like heavily discounted on some website. But they only had one color. And I just really didn't need any more yarn. So I exercised self-control. But uh, I love knitting this. I knit this, oh my god, how long ago? Two, two years two, ago? Two. Well, you wore it at Rhinebeck. Yeah. And that, what, that what was year was 2019. it? 2019. So I, I knitted in 2019. And this was um, like my first time knitting something um, that involved uh, like uh, two, well, what do you call the SSK? Oh. This is my first time doing SSK. And I wish I would have known the perfected SSK. Um, method, but I didn't. But anyway, it turned out really well. I love wearing this. Like, if I'm going out somewhere and it may be chilly, I will take this and throw this on and I feel fine. I love it. It's by Sylvia Hager. Sylvia Hager? Okay. I never yeah. knew the name of the person who wrote the pattern. I know. And I looked it up because I thought it was um, a friend of mine who used to work for she used to design for Blue Sky. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't her. So. And you know, this this yarn for me was a treat. Mm -hmm. I, it was like a birthday present to myself because this is probably the most expensive yarn I've ever purchased. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that to like brag or anything like that. Trust me, I always try to get a deal because I was on every website trying to see who had it. So this is um, just kind of oldie but goodie, not a FO or anything like that. But you know, once again, I got a shout out to us because we kind of coordinate like... I think oh, it yeah. pairs nicely, the leaf mm -hmm. or the feather motif mm -hmm. in the gray. We yeah. always coordinate. So we would have actually been co coordinating uh, with the blue because I do have an FO and I was going to wear this. So finally finished my wave of change minus the wave just um, the change. more change <laughs> because I didn't do because I modified I didn't do the pearl bumps but I finally finished and this feels amazing um this yarn is wool folk loved mm -hmm. it's a uh, chunky and it, it doesn't feel super chunky no um I had decided I originally I still have a uh, some ends that I need to um to weave in I was going to wear this today but when I tried it on yesterday I decided that I want to wet block it I had originally decided that I may not need to block it at all but when I tried it on the ribbing wasn't as flat as I wanted it to be mm. so I am going to and normally um I would steam block chunky right. but I feel like I can wet block this and it'll be just fine 
So I'm going to wet block this probably tomorrow. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited to wear this. I wanted, like I said, I wanted, we would have been matching. I wanted to wear it I today, know. but it just, it wasn't ready. And I mean, honestly, if I would have worn it, you wouldn't have been able to see what I was talking about. But no. I'm wearing this. Well, so that was on your needles for a while. This? Right? Ish. What's a while? I mean, not since August. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the thing hadn't even been on. Um, yeah. Wait, when Wait, did... was it before the election? I feel like it was... No, because the pattern wasn't even out then. Oh. Um, and I didn't have the yarn. Um, I want to say, because there was a knit along that started in January mm -hmm. or February, and I didn't have my yarn. I had to order my yarn because I wasn't sure what color I wanted, and I found, um the color that I wanted and I decided to use the yarn that Denise used in um oh. like in her model. I was like, Oh, I wanna try this yarn and I found it and I ordered it but it was on back order. Mm -hmm. So I think this was on my needle since like early February. Here I go dropping more stitches. Yeah. See, this is why I can't knit on size one needles. Um I don't have while that podcasting. Um so I'm done with this. I'm going to give it a good soaking um, tomorrow. Take some pictures. Post it on Instagram. And maybe wear it next time. I don't know. It might be too hot to wear it. I mean, if it's time. like a 60 degree yeah. day with yeah. a breeze or something. Mm -hmm. But like, oh my god, we would have been Or here. if you're um like dining on a patio. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of patio, we're in our patio together. And I am so excited. Nice. Um, and I finished, well, semi-finished <laughs> the sock tube. Finally, I just need to do the heels, and I can do that at any time. I thought about doing it before we recorded again, but I'm like, you know what? I mean, that takes like a couple, I just, doesn't it take a couple hours by the time you cut and you... Yeah, I need to measure, and, and I love doing the afterthought heel, but honestly, I never remember like where to measure mm. and so i need to like measure and i also realized that it's thick um i mean i don't know what to say about that all of my socks feel kind of thick because when you know by the time you knit them up on a on a one it, it's going to create a, a thicker yeah fabric with the with the yarn hmm Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, They're pretty. So, <laughs> I was supposed to finish these in November, but because these are pumpkin um, spice. Right. <clears throat> but um, something that I realized is that I was placing my heel too high, and I think I'm going to measure and then place it an inch lower, mm. and, I, and I'm going to see how it fits. Which would shorten like if this is your yes. foot it would bring mm -hmm. okay yeah i'm gonna try i mean the thing about sock knitting is that you have to try over and over again before you get the right fit for your foot see this is why you should try the fish lips kiss pattern because it talks about all that and measures you create a little diagram of like i'm not doing all this of that. and this did you do that yeah i'm not doing that you I know what care. it's totally worth it you do I it mean, once and then you're set for like all your socks. Okay. We'll see. I'm, I'm just going to keep playing around and moving the thing up and down and go from there. Because I don't... Some things I just don't have time for. Like, if... Like if your it, side boo. I mean, who is doing this, all of that? This episode is going to be called Socks and Side Boo. Who's going to do all of that for a side boo? Like, okay. I, I see you. I your see side you. boo might be worth it. Now, sometimes on that divorce court, it definitely seems... <laughs> But, um, yeah, I'm going to try, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do an afterthought heel and I'm going to move it down maybe about an inch and, and see if that works. But I think that that's going to work. I think that I was placing my heel too high and I realized that when I did a German short roll heel on my last sock mm -hmm. and the way that they fit was different and the foot was shorter because I tried on the foot. Oh, excuse my feet. I tried on the foot. And it was time to start decreasing for the toe. So, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it was time to start decreasing for the toe. And I right. realized that my foot 
it was, on my afterthought was, was too long. Too, okay. Mm-hmm. So do you do you always do the afterthought? <sighs> no, I I do German short row. That, oh, that's, that's how that's I realized. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's how I realized that my afterthought may be placed um in the wrong spot. Uh-huh. And, and I think I'm going to do German short row for this too. See, it's like the difference between a pieced sweater and a. Uh, top down where you can try it on mm-hmm. or a bottom up versus a top down right and with exactly so when you're when you do a german short row heel or any like a heel turn or or whatever it is flat you got, your gusset, heel. You got your heel and you can try it on along the way and see what um the true length of your foot when to start your toe yep yep, yep. um so what are you going to do for the sock make long uh i'm going to do the german short row Okay, because I was going to say, the kits come with the contrast yarn, two mini skeins. Mm-hmm. Um, so that probably makes the most sense. Yeah, I mean, I mean you, I can do, you can do any. The thing about, so these aren't striped. If, if, if this yarn was striped, I would definitely do an afterthought heel. Okay. Because a stripe, um, an afterthought heel on a striped yarn helps the stripes stay consistent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see that. It uh, right, it doesn't look weird. The only reason why I'm doing an after I do, I'm doing an afterthought heel on this sock is because I was doing a German short row, and it was um, Raven took it off the the needles one time, and then I lost count the second time. So I just said forget it and just started knitting the sock. I said yeah. I don't even feel like being bothered with it, but um, I'm I'm gonna make sure I do the German short row on this. Okay. Yeah. We talked about whips. We talked about FOs. Oh, I did mention. Yep, I didn't mention my friend Yesenia made these earrings. You can see better like that. I can see them. Um, They're like, um, what do you call it? When you um, when they make earrings with clay. You know what that's called? No, I forget. Anyway. Oh wow. She made this with mm-hmm. clay? Mm-hmm. I, th- I don't know if they're made of clay. But oh, okay. Anyway, she made these. She's making me um, some other stuff for those FO photos I still need to take. So I'm excited. So if you uh, if you need some jewelry, go see my girl Yesenia. Okay. Um, you always wear creative earrings. I always wear the same earrings since 8th grade. <laughs> Seriously, since 8th grade. Hoops. Well, I mean, they're they work. They do. You know what? On like non podcasting days, I generally just wear these little like um, huggy diamond mini hoops. Mm-hmm. I don't same, wear earrings. Same. Really? Oh, not when I'm just at home. No. Oh, because my my ears my piercings will close up really fast, so I keep what? earrings in. Yep. Oh, well, no, I um, don't. I mean, I've had my piercings since I was six months old, so. Mine never close. Um, let's talk about what you have going on. I know you have a couple events coming up. Yeah. So next weekend, I am vending as part of YarnCon, which um, in normal times is a big um, fiber extravaganza um, market, if you will, in Chicago. And, of course, they're doing it virtual this year. Um, so... Um, I'm excited about that. I'll be doing a Zoom kind of um, meet the maker type of thing on Sunday the 11th. I want to say around noon Eastern time. So I'm excited for that. Um, And then I just added to the shop 10 new colorways of my cotton convertible yarn, which I had debuted last year. And then... um, they ran out of the base, so I was oh, waiting yeah. on it. Oh, yeah, there were, there were some um, some dyers who had a hard time finding certain bases yeah. because of the pandemic. There's still a lot of bases that are um, hard to get. Mm-hmm. And um, so anyway, I just added this cotton. It's sport weight. I did all kind of summery, vibrant, fun colors. And so that's in the shop, so I'm excited about that. And... Um, that's it. I have a couple things coming up. I still have the baby shower kit, which I'll send you pictures once I'm finished with it. Um, the baby shower kit that I'm going to mail out this week. I finally 
got everything how I wanted. I was trying to create some decals that wasn't necessarily working in one of the programs that I used. So I actually made a decal in um, Adobe Illustrator because you know okay. it is my goal to learn how to use Illustrator. So right. I created a decal in Illustrator yesterday. I was so excited and everything is bright because it was nice. looking it was looking wrong in the other program that I was using. And you know, I'm a perfectionist and I was like, I cannot, I cannot send this out. So finally, um, I have everything for that kit ready. I just have to like do some printing and some cutting and I'm gonna mail it out. And once I take pictures, I'll send it to you. We won't be able to insert it in this podcast, but probably in the next one because I want the mom to receive it first. Sure. Um, I have a couple wood signs that I'm doing. I have this really cute baseball one that I'm finishing. Nice. Um, I did the stain on it. Remember I told you I sent you this the, the two red. stains, the uh -huh. red and the brown. Um, and so I sent that to uh to the person who's buying it and she's like, Okay, now I see the red, but I'm super excited about that. And what else do I have going on? That's it. I um just have those two. I have a couple wood rounds that I'm making, but I'm really excited about the baseball wood is round. Is the thing the mug that you made that you sent me a photo of? Oh, the mug, mug. Yeah, I've is been that making... a new machine? Yes. Okay, I thought yes. so. So the the knitting one I created, um, the fuel by Coffee and Knitting. Mm -hmm. I created that um, that graphic and put it on a mug, and then I have another graphic that I didn't create this graphic. I just you know put it on the mug with the coffee with the definition so mm -hmm. i've been drinking out of those those are 15 ounces wow and so that's, I know that's a lot of coffee <laughs> <laughs> so i've been drinking at least 15 ounces um uh worth of coffee a day but um so yeah i've been creating the mug that's why i'm waiting for us to get the oh yeah logo bag so i can put we that on the mug. That. yeah yeah we got a new logo coming yeah. soon we're getting a logo can't wait um so yeah Nice. I've been doing a lot of creative things, um, but my main thing is learning how to use Adobe Illustrator. Reggie knows how. Okay. He knows how to use Illustrator. He knows how to use the whole Adobe suite. And so... Hmm. so he's been... I'm having trouble hearing you. <laughs> because you're not supposed to hear me, nosy. Siri. <laughs> she scared me. That scared me. Um, I like her voice. My Siri is like some Irish guy. Really? Yeah. Aren't, aren't you Irish? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so um, he knows how, he knows how to use all of these things, and sometimes he show me how to do something. But he because he knows how to do it, he just like he'll take it and he'll just like do it. But for the most part, I've been like going to YouTube okay. and figuring it out. Sometimes so. it's hard learning from your significant other, especially if like. I think there are people who are good at teaching, and then there are mm -hmm. people who just want to like like you said. Uh, just give it to me and I'll take care of yeah. it. Yeah, you know. Yep. So, yeah, so I'm excited. I was excited to create that graphic last night. Oh, um, and I'm just gonna keep keep practicing. And look, sorry, not to change subjects, but that's okay. I found I, the other day I was organizing my uh -huh. project bags. Uh huh. Do you remember when I bought this at Rite? Yeah, Deck? I think we both have one. I think so too. Yeah, mine is still um, packed away somewhere. I won't say it out loud in case there's little ears listening, but isn't that the cutest uh, little bag? And I, need a... I purposefully bought it for sock knitting, which I'm not um, a prolific sock knitter, as we discussed. <laughs> but um, I got that out and. Then I have to show you um, one last little thing. Hold that thought. I do not have uh, my my Bernie pin. It's in my other bag. I wanted to um, so show my pin. Um, if you watched the last episode, I want to say, I think you heard me talk about the box of love that I dyed. A mini uh, mini skein for uh, it was a collaboration with seven other indie dyers and a design by Michelle of 144 stitches for her stitch and hustle blog and I think there might be a few literally like a handful of boxes still available mm -hmm. but in this box you get a bunch of mini skeins a bunch of little goodies um, a whole like a couple patterns two or three patterns and um, so the indie dyers that collaborated 
on this, we all swapped mini skeins amongst ourselves. And so now that the box is out, I can show you, but these are, let's see. So I have mini skeins from when we went to Rhinebeck. Mm -hmm. And oh, you bought mini skeins at Rhinebeck? A couple from Asylum Fibers. Oh, okay. Maybe I was from Kansas. And then I got mini skeins from um, from when I went to Stitch Up Chicago last year. So these were the mini skeins I had from before. And I was really struggling to figure out what... I wanted to make them together. Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to make a Jessie Mae top. But then I got these, these mini skeins cute. for this collaboration. Mm -hmm. And... I laid it all out, and I know it's not laying out right now, so it's kind of hard to see. It's Maybe, like, take way. a picture. Yeah, I'll insert. insert a photo. But I laid it all out, and it created a really cool rainbow, and it's 13 mini skeins. And I realized if I, they're fingering weight, if I held it with, like, maybe a light gray fingering weight to kind of make it a DK and mute it a little bit, I could make... Um, Andrea Mowry striped sweater. Mm. Oh yeah, I want to make the striped sweater. I told you what colors I want for that. Did you? Mm-hmm. I'll I'll show you. I'll I'll screenshot the text message. Okay. So anyway, um, when these other indie dyers and I decided we would swap amongst ourselves, Marion of Marionated Yarns, who is one of the dyers. She agreed to, um, she offered kindly, actually, to coordinate. So we mailed her the mini skeins, and then she mailed us back one of each from each of us. Mm -hmm. And in that, she sent us um, these pins. Oh, those are cute. Um, uh, this is... That's not showing. Yeah. No, they're... Yeah, there we go. Oh, okay. Look I at that. Know. Personal <laughs> yarn enabler. So cute. You so, are a yarn enabler. Am I? Mm -hmm. Do you think? So this is going to go on my <laughs> on my pin bag. That is so cute. I um I was oh, I'm afraid to um put my pins on my bag sometimes because they fall off. I know. But you know what? I really like these ones with the um the they do have some different style backings like screw on. Mm-hmm. And they have some more, um, I don't know, they're just better quality. Yeah. I thought about getting some M1 Yarns pins. Mm hmm I might down the road. Yeah. Um, so if you're interested, comment below. I could make some buttons. Oh, that's a great idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Love I told it. you I've been thinking about, like, swag. Oh, yeah. So and I have, like, I have so much stuff that I don't use and I need to put to use. So, podcast swag? With split splitty? Yeah. That would be awesome. Mm -hmm. So, comment below if you have any, um, any desire. Yeah. Sorry, I'm dropping skeins. Um, other than that... So, we want to move in a direction where we're inviting makers on. Because we are M1 Yarns. Well, she's M1 Yarns, and I'm the Michigan Maker. Right. But we you are the maker. I am the, the maker. The, bo the boss babe maker. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we want to invite other makers on to have a conversation with them just to add more engagement to the podcast and really let you get to know other makers, right, more than us. And so I am excited about that. I can't give you any promises of... Um, who and when. Who and when, right? I don't want to start throwing out names no. and then, you know, like a bad nope. promoter. You know how, like, a promoter would say somebody famous is going to be at the party? Right. And then everybody comes <laughs> to the party and that person doesn't show up? Right. That happened a lot when I lived in Chicago. We're, we're um, not, we're, Oprah won't be here. It won't, it but, will not be First Lady Michelle Obama. I know she's a knitter now, but we can't right. promise that she's going to be on podcast. I mean, we can hope. That would be really nice. Oprah can have us on her show because I've been watching that on Apple TV. Mm -hmm. Love it. We'd be willing to come on and have a conversation. Yeah, I, if I had to choose though, I would, I would pick Michelle Obama. Really? Over Oprah? Yes! Oh, now that's an interesting Absolutely. conversation. Absolutely. I mean, is Oprah a knitter? No, but that means we could make her a knitter. 
There's an opportunity. I mean, and I don't, I don't have anything against Oprah, but if, if I had... I'm like, are you, you an Oprah hater? No, I'm not an Oprah <laughs> hater, but I'm like, if I had an opportunity, and I know that First Lady Michelle Obama is a knitter, I would want her on the podcast to talk about her knitting. Okay, so we're going to put Michelle Obama here, and then Oprah, like, maybe the, the follow-up episode. And then um, our VP, Kamala Harris... She's also a crocheter. She's been to a yarn shop. She's recently. been to a yarn shop, but we can't promise to have any no. of those people. Beyonce. Okay? Um, Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> we have Beyonce. Um, but we will be reaching out to people, and we hope that they accept our invitation. And we're just going to pretty much continue to work on our platform to bring you content um, as things get a little bit better. We're hoping to record more. Um, and we have recorded a little bit more. Yeah, I'm we're, excited we're about that. Up steam. We are. Um, but I am super excited in the things that we're discussing and the direction that we want to go in yeah. with the podcast. And with that, too, I mean, we want to keep this a dialogue. This has always yeah. been about community. Our vision for this was really not much at all about us. Mm -hmm. We wanted to um, to create space for dialogue. And so um, we invite you to participate. Oh, we have a Ravelry forum now. I know Ravelry is a little bit of a hot topic. Um, I'm not going to even. We're not going to go there. <laughs> but if, if you feel safe on Ravelry and you want to chat with us, there's a forum. Um, we have, um, we have a lot in the works. Comment below if you have, you know, ideas or things that you'd like to suggest. Yeah. I think we're, we're um, open to a dialogue. Yeah. Um, and I haven't talked much about my Facebook group oh, that yeah. I've had for the last two years, I think. Two or three. I have to go back and see, like, what what year I started the group. But years ago, I started a, um, a group for black women who love to knit and crochet. And that's literally the name of the group. Black women who love to crochet or knit. And it started out with maybe 20 people because it was it was just an idea. And I almost got in trouble in one of the groups for even putting the idea out there because there's so many, like, oh. rules to different groups on yeah. Facebook. And I was like, hey, you know, what do you all think of this? And then the um, owner was like, uh, you are solicit. I'm like, wait a minute now. Let's talk about this. I'm not trying to solicit. But I was just thinking of, of this as an idea. Mm -hmm. So I actually started the group that day and hadn't thought much of it. And so now, you know, we, we've we grown to over 5,000 members. Wow. Yes, yeah, over 5,000 members. Um, I admit at least 50 people a day. And wow. I actually look at every single profile before I accept someone because there's always something crazy going on. Yeah. And so I, I accept. Um, so I, I literally have to take time and I, I can't move as fast. I have some moderators and they help as well. Um, so because this is a, a job, it's like a job you don't get paid for. It. Yeah. And so managing managing a group of 5,000 people actually isn't easy. But I created this group because I wanted to create a space for black women who love the fiber arts. And this was before everything started acting, everything got all weird in the, the yarn community. Yeah. Um, and I hadn't thought about it because I am the type of person who I will, like, lay low in the cut. And mm -hmm. you don't necessarily need to know what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. But I'm like, wow, I have, I've been bringing this community together for years and I hadn't even realized mm -hmm. that and all the women who are on a group they always talk about I mean not every 5,000 of them but a lot of them always talk about how grateful they are for this space mm -hmm. that I created and it literally was just a thing and I'll talk about why I created it offline because it is it is kind of a funny story but um I'll, I'll go ahead and say it. I kept getting kicked out of the white groups <laughs> I kept getting kicked out of the white groups for silly reasons. And, and this was before the whole talk of racism in the knitting community. Yeah. This was like 2017, 2018. But I think that just speaks oh. to how long racism has yes. been an issue. And I got kicked out of the first, the first group I got kicked out of, one of the moderators accused me of posting her graph. I was doing these graph games. 
and she she accused me of posting her graph so someone can steal it and i had to explain to her that disney owns the graphic first of all let's let's be serious and i said second of all it was just a picture it was like a small picture mm -hmm. of what i was making it was kind of like a whip post and it was a uh, elsa okay and i was i posted the whip i was making the blanket for my niece that i never finished and i posted it and, and then she got upset and she said that i was acting i was playing stupid is what she said to me and well, I, that's kind of a it was unnecessary it was tone. it was i mean it was harsh and then they kicked me out the group and i was like okay i mean i know i didn't do anything intentionally i wasn't trying to get her graph stolen even though she stole it from disney so i was like okay once you get kicked out it's really nothing you can say right you can't be like hey why you kick me out so and then the other group that i got kicked out of someone asked a question and a lot of times you know when you ask a question in a group on facebook um you may not get it answered because people it, it gets lost in the shuffle and that's why as a um, owner of a group I try to go through posts daily to see if someone asks a question so I can answer or I can push it to the top mm -hmm. so someone asks a question and then in their attempt to bring the post to the top they commented on the post again and someone kind of commented back you just you just ask a question why don't you wait for someone to answer before you post again it was really nasty and so i replied i said wow that was that was a nasty reply yeah and it, it happened to be a moderator and oh. she just kicked me out the group and i said okay so I, this is the second time i've been kicked out of a white space I'm starting my own group, right? And I, <laughs> it's one of those. If they won't give you a seat at the table, get right. on the table. And I started my own group, um, and again, it started with about twenty members. And I, you know, I make sure everybody feels welcome, no matter what they post. They feel welcome. Um, I don't just kick people out. I try to be restorative before I kick someone. I, I've had to kick someone. I had to kick two people out out of maybe three years i had to kick two people out because of the way they were engaging with others and i tried to be restorative i tried to get them to understand what they were saying and doing was wrong and when they didn't arrive to that conclusion i said peace you're out right um but i tried to um interact just differently from the way that i was treated and I don't talk about that a lot because, again, I'm the type of person that just kind of lay low in the cut and I'm doing things and yeah. nobody really knows. But I think that was um, that topic or that um, <clears throat> sense was really what got us talking when we first met because we talked a lot about how yarn shops are really, and this is surprisingly not talked about much, um, really unwelcoming a mm -hmm. lot of times of minorities and crocheters mm -hmm. crocheters you'll hear it because um it's not you know so touchy um and let's be real they're both fiber arts knit and crochet and as a yarn shop owner why let's uh, you're a business owner mm -hmm. you should want everybody's money equally and you should be welcoming of that person because your customer base is everything you know and yarn shops generally have like knit nights or classes and if you're literally not welcoming everybody at the table you might as well not have the table you might as well just be online yeah and then imagine being black and a crocheter yeah now we're talking about intersectionality you got two things going yes. on for you and so you you're black you walk into a yarn store um people think you're not there to spend money and then you want to crochet and then they're wondering why you want to crochet with nice yarn or you know expensive yarn so yeah i am just really happy that i've created this space and i've been able to maintain it and i like i said i go through every um request and and one of the questions is how did you hear about this group and um aarp did like a um small section on their site about different communities for black women 
um, who are a part of a- AARP, and they had a section about the group there. Oh, cool. And then I find out some really interesting things. It was something on, um, what do you call that? House, not house party. Um, what's the other one? Where people are, like, talk, you go to hear people talk. It's a community. TED Talk? Not TED Talk. <laughs> no, I ain't that big. I, 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 I haven't had a TED Talk. It, TED talk. It's, on my, it's on my phone here. Let me find it. Uh, Clubhouse. Oh, I've never heard of that one. Yeah. Um, You're always someone, ahead of me on someone apps, was so. talking. Someone was talking about it on there, and I haven't even been on there, but... I hope that we continue to grow, and I hope that um, women continue to feel welcome. Black women continue to feel welcome in the fiber arts community, and there are so many people making sure of that, and I'm just really excited to be a part of that. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And I I mean, I can't even begin to imagine. um, You know, I I commented on someone's post today. um, It was discussing the issue of... um, racism, anti-racism, equity, and my comment basically, in summary, was if every white person could just spend one day in a a minority, a BIPOC person's shoes, I I can only imagine it would be extremely Mm -hmm. eye-opening. So, you know, I think that, that people have blinders on. Yeah. So, yeah. We're ending on a, a heavy topic, yep. but important. Very important, but I cannot wait to have different makers here on the podcast so we yep. can continue the conversation, not just about this topic, but all topics related to being a maker. Yep. Yep. Crafty people. Yeah. Cool. So, I think that is our time. We're always looking at the time. We're yeah. at... We uh, always a end little, about the same time. Yep. We always end at the same time. Mm-hmm. I have to um, go get dinner for my folks. And what do you have to do? I'm sure I have to edit this. Ah, she has to edit. I'm going to learn how to edit because I have some ideas. But I can only learn so many things at a time. I'm, yeah, I'm you learning have, Adobe like... right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so... <laughs> You texted me last night. Oh, you were, you were like I thought about uh, learning the cross stitch. Was it cross stitch it or was, needlepoint? It was needle. See, I don't know the difference between the two, but I'm like I can't even afford to learn. I this used right to now. do cross stitch when I was a kid because my mom did it. But I did plastic canvas. See, already I need reading glasses to knit. This is oh, sad. Wow. So yeah. um. So my text back to you was, we just need to stay in our creative lanes. We need to stay lanes. in our lanes. Stay in I'll our dye yarn. Lane. You do graphics. Right. And we'll knit and crochet. And, um, that's it. And we'll podcast. I know. So. Well, thank you for joining yep. us. Um, please comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell so you can get a notification every time we post. Until next time, my friends. Bye. Bye.